We've now seen how the imposition of a tariff on Iowa corn sold in North Carolina creates a difference in the prices that emerge in North Carolina and Iowa, with a higher price emerging in North Carolina and a lower price emerging in Iowa. And that difference was exactly equal to the per unit tax that's being imposed on Iowa corn in North Carolina. It's a compensating price difference. It compensates exporters for the tax that they have to pay when they bring goods into North Carolina. And we can already see who's going to win and who's going to lose from such a tariff. In North Carolina, the price rises. So that's bad for North Carolina consumers. It's good for North Carolina firms. In Iowa, the price falls, which is bad for Iowa firms, but good for Iowa consumers. But the bigger question is, what happens to overall surplus? Are the winnings bigger or smaller than the losses from the tariff? And that's a little bit harder to see in this picture because it's gotten pretty complicated. So what I've done is I've labeled these areas with lowercase letters. And we're just going to add up what amounts to consumer surplus and producer surplus without and with the tariff, both in North Carolina and in Iowa. So let's start with North Carolina. Initially, before the tariff, the magenta price was the price across both North Carolina and Iowa. So consumers paid that price and bought this large quantity. So they got a consumer surplus of everything above the magenta line up to the demand curve, which is A, B, C, D, E, and F. So A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. When the tariff is imposed, their price goes up. So they buy less at a higher price they get everything a blue, above the blue line up to the demand curve A plus B. So with the tariff, they're left with A plus B. They're worse off. What about producers? Well, originally they sold at the magenta price and they sold a low quantity. So they just had the surplus G below the magenta price down to the supply curve. So just G. Now they get a higher price after the tariff, and they sell more. So they now get C plus G. What about in Iowa? Well, initially, Iowa consumers were buying at the magenta price. They were buying relatively little. Everything above that price up to the demand curve gives us the area H for their consumer surplus. But then the price drops, so they buy more. At that lower price, they get surplus H plus I plus J. They are better off because prices have fallen. Producers originally were selling at that magenta price. So they got everything below that magenta price down to the supply curve. All of these letters in here, I, J, K, and so forth. So I plus J plus K plus L plus M, plus N, plus O, plus P, plus Q, that last area in here. After the tariff, they're getting a lower price, so they're producing less, and they get everything below that blue price down to the supply curve N, O, P, and Q. N plus O plus P plus Q. Well, we can now compare the surplus that we got before to the surplus that we got after. The H happens both before and after, so we're not losing it. So we can just sort of cancel it out to keep track of things. The I happens in both cases, in one case on the producer side, in the other case on the consumer side, but it happens in both sides. The J happens on both sides. The N happens on both sides. The O happens on both sides, so does the P and the Q. So when we go from the without tariff case to the tariff case, we're losing K, L, and M. So the deadweight loss in Iowa is equal to we're losing K plus L plus M. 
Well, that's the change in surplus. That's the dead weight loss. What about over here? Well, we are not quite done here because we haven't accounted for the tax revenue yet. North Carolina collects tax revenue under the tariff. And that goes to somebody, so it should count as part of the surplus. So how much tax revenue is being collected? Well, it's the size of the per unit tax times how much is being imported from Iowa. So it's this distance times this distance. So let's bring that distance over. We now see that's this distance, that's the per unit tax, and this quantity is how much was imported from Iowa. So it's that rectangle in here. It includes the area E and in also includes this unlabeled area here. The reason I didn't label that area is because it actually shows up over here. This is the portion of the tax that causes the decrease in price in Iowa multiplied by how much we imported into North Carolina. But that's equal to how much we exported from Iowa. So if we take that distance, that lower portion, and multiply it by how much was exported, that's the same as multiplying that distance by how much was imported. So this is actually equal to that. So the total tax revenue then is E plus L. E plus L. But what this shows is that part of the tax burden has been shifted away from North Carolina and into Iowa. Iowa residents are paying part of this tax that's collected in North Carolina and that's benefiting North Carolina, and only a portion of the tariff tax is paid in North Carolina. So now we can compare the two columns. We get an A in both cases, so we don't lose that. We get a B in both cases, we get a C in both cases, and a G, and an E, but we're losing D and F and we're gaining L. So the change in surplus in North Carolina is equal to the loss of D and F and the gain of L. So D and F are these triangles in here. We're losing those, but we're gaining L, this area down here which is equal to that area over here. It's unclear which one's bigger. It could be that overall surplus in North Carolina is actually increasing as a result of the tariff. In Iowa, on the other hand, we only have losses. We lose K, L, and M. We use the tri lose the triangles K and M, plus we lose that L, that's the tax revenue that's paid by North Carolina residents that's paid by Iowa residents in North Carolina. So we know that Iowa is certainly going to lose. North Carolina might gain or lose depending on which of these is bigger. But we can also ask the two regions together, are they losing or gaining? Well, we have a plus L here and we have a minus L here. So those are going to cancel. And the overall deadweight loss across the two regions is then the minus D and F here and the minus K and M here. The L is a negative here and it's a positive here so those would cancel when we add them up. So while North Carolina might benefit from having the tariff in terms of overall surplus, over all the regions are losing, there's a deadweight loss across the two states. And that deadweight loss is the triangle D, F, and the triangles K and M.